Hello, and thank you for joining us here on The Neutral Zone. I am Phil Milani, joined as always in studio by my trusty sidekick, my partner in crime. You know who I'm talking about. The best way to describe this person is my everything. It's at Eric Dalala. Phil, this is starting to feel familiar almost. You know, we've just been in here the last few weeks grinding away, looking at the season, looking at training camp. That's all I can think about. I, I don't even think I would know how to click a Zoom link if I had to. What's a Zoom? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This feels natural. This feels like the way normal people have a conversation, you know? Into microphones. Yeah. We got to record it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, one of our goals for this podcast is for this to be an interactive experience. You know, like you're driving in your car, you're uh, doing some heavy back squats or something in the gym. You know, maybe you're taking your dog for a walk. I know some of our listeners. Walking your doggy? Yeah, walking your doggy. I know some of our listeners like to do that. And th- you're part of the conversation here with us. You know, that's the goal. You know, that's the goal. It's me, Eric, and you, the listener. We're talking to you. Yeah. Who else would we be talking to? No. No. Okay. That imaginary person in your head. Yeah. <laughs> they always agree with me. Eric, that's why you have so much confidence, huh? Yeah. You're like, I mean, the bravada. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, we're here to talk about the big question today. The big one. The big question. I know. I'm not sure I'm ready. I know. Uh, listeners probably already know because it's in the headline. Yeah, that's you true. Know, but we're, You're trying we're to building it, it up. Yeah. We're building it up. Who is going to win the quarterback battle? Yeah. We're going to answer it. When? Today. Okay. Right now. Wow. Eric, it's Drew Locke. It's Teddy Bridgewater facing off. Mono y mano. Even reps. They've done the offseason program. They're going to hit training camp, and then we're going to find out. You don't even need to wait till then, though, because you'll find out right now. That's right. Phil, do we, what if we, before we post this, because we, we generally post these the next day, what if some crazy trade happens between now and when we post this? Trade? I don't know. Just, just pretend. That, you're just putting that out there? Just, I'm just, oh. Not even necessarily with the Broncos, just in general. Oh, got it. Any yeah. trade. I mean, that any could sport, impact something. Any sport. Yeah, that's any true. trade, any that's sport. That's true. That's true. This has been a weird off season for the quarterback position. It has. So a many room, rumors. A lot of rumors. Yeah. But we don't do rumors here. <laughs> no. We just do we're not, meat we're and not potatoes. Doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're talking Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater. Who wins? You including Brett Rippin or no? Um, not for this purpose of this conversation. Brett, we yeah. still we care about you deeply. Yeah, of course. Week one, Broncos at New York Giants. Who's starting? 4 p.m. Eastern kickoff. Yeah. The teams run out of the tunnel to the coin toss. The afternoon kickoff. It's a, it's it's a the, late yeah, game. It's the big yeah. game. Yep. So it's it a big a game. Big enchilada. Yep. Quarterback goes into the huddle wearing a single-digit number. Yeah. Teddy Bridgewater. Ooh. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I'm sorry to spoil it. I know some people, you know, you like to, you like your chapter books, the little twists at the end. You oh. watch your Netflix show. You don't want to know, like, who did it. Uh, it was a son. Didn't uh, see that coming. I, I'm sorry to tell you now, months before the season opener, but Teddy Bridgewater is going to be out there. Interesting. Because I was, when I you at, when this? I had these visions, yeah. I thought that that jersey number was going to be three. Oh. That's, is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Wow. So yeah. Maybe we saw different visions. Yeah. Here's what we'll both say, Phil. First okay. of all, okay. I think I want to get this out there. We're not rooting for one guy over the other. This is purely a – it's what we think will happen, not necessarily what we want to happen. I don't. I like Drew. I like Teddy. They've both been nothing but professional to deal with. I think that maybe long-term it's best for the franchise if Drew Locke wins the job and goes out and plays really, really well and you keep a young guy. But – when I look at this quarterback competition and I think about what I saw during OTAs and minicamp, what I saw last year from Drew Locke, what we know Teddy Bridgewater is, I think the highs of Drew Locke are higher than the highs of Teddy Bridgewater. I think he can make, ceiling is higher. I think he can make plays that Teddy can't make. I think he has arm strength that Teddy doesn't have, which Teddy has said. Teddy admits that their games are very different. Drew has incredible playmaking ability, and you see it sometimes in practice. 
in quarters in a game and halves of a game for full games, a couple of games in a row. And you're like, wow, like he, this could be a really good player. And so far the, the, the issue has been consistency because just as often as that, there's been games that haven't gone well or practices that haven't gone well. And I will say, you know, Drew picked it up toward the end of last year. His interception to touchdown ratio got much better over the final five weeks. But I think when Vic Fangio and George Payton, assuming George has a say in this, which I would think he would at least talk with Vic about it, they're going to look at this roster and say, hey, we're in a really good spot. We can't afford to waste this season because we're going to have to start extending guys like Cortland Sutton and Bradley Chubb and Noah Fant here sooner or later. We got to take advantage of this really good young roster. We got to get back in the playoffs. Who's the guy that we know we can count on to be consistent week in and week out? And I think that's Teddy. Mm. And so you think he's going to start that first game? I do, because I think that when you battle this out in the preseason, Drew Locke will probably have some better practices and better games than, uh, than Teddy Bridgewater. But I think there's going to be those moments where if it's a move the ball drill late or if it's a, you know, a, a, an untimely interception, I think some of those things are just part of Drew Locke's game and his personality. And I think if you had a, a team where the roster around him wasn't great and you could give him another year to kind of battle through it, you'd do that. But the rest of the roster is ready to win now. And I think in an NFL locker room, you have to go with the guy that gives you the best chance to win or else you lose that locker room. And so if Teddy shows that he's going to – that's what this team needs. This, this team can't go to New York, for example, Phil, and and win by – 10 points and then the next week go to Jacksonville and struggle because of a couple of interceptions or because the offense can't score. You can't come home and struggle against the New York Jets and then the next week play well against uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think, is the next game. It might be the Ravens. Because last year we saw that, you know, the, the Broncos, they went to Kansas City and they played well, undermanned. They almost won that game. And then you'd come home and you'd struggle against a team that you really shouldn't struggle against. And so to me, you've got to get a baseline. You've got to get a level of consistency where, you know, it might not be the flashiest play, but you can't, you can't kind of modulate from week to week and be really up one week and really down one week. You're not going to make the playoffs that way. And so to get this team a chance to get to 10 wins, which I think is probably the minimum you're going to need to get a playoff spot, you've got to start fast can't avoid these big issues, these big mistakes. Sorry, you can't have these big mistakes that could cost you a win against the Giants or the Jets or the Jaguars. To me, th- th- that means you go with the safe option, and that's Teddy. Yeah. Uh, here, here's how I sort of see it. I sort of see Drew starting the season for the Broncos because he's been in this system for a while. This, this is the second year with uh, uh, Pat Shermer here. He's saying he feels more confident. He says now they can focus on the minor details where last year everything was really big picture. He said he felt like at the end of last year they started to figure each other out, Drew Locke and Pat Shermer. They were on the same page. And this offseason, Drew's been working hard. He's been working on his footwork. And I think that he's done enough – to at least get the nod to start the season. But I think that Teddy is here to say, okay, if you start the season off slowly or poorly or you have some of these bad games like we saw last year against um, the Raiders or on the road against the Falcons, if you have games like that, we're going to go to Teddy. Because last year we talked about this a lot, Eric, Should Drew have been benched in a couple of those games? You You talked about that. You pounded the table and said, no way. That would destroy his confidence. I said, hey, you've still got to think about the whole team here. You've got to try and win some of these games. I think now you can do that with Teddy Bridgewater. You've got a guy who is definitely capable of coming in and winning football games and being a starter in this league. And if I can for just a second here, Eric, talk about Teddy's career – What an interesting career to me, if you look at Teddy Bridgewater, because that 2015 season in Minnesota, he's 23 years old. He's it's his second year in the league. Minnesota goes 11 and five. He goes to the pro bowl. He threw 14 touchdowns, nine interceptions that year. And you're thinking this guy's going to be a big time quarterback in this league. He's going to be the future of the Minnesota Vikings. He has that horrific injury there. And Uh, His career takes a turn. You know, he's a backup in New Orleans for a little while. Last year had a chance to be the guy in Carolina. And talking to Teddy this uh, this offseason, he says, 
I feel good mentally, spiritually, and physically. He says, he's, if a reporter asked him, hey, do you feel like 2015? Are you around there? He says, if you want me to f- say I feel like that, then yes, I feel like 2015. That wasn't just any R, Phil. That was me. You asked him that question? Of course I did. You oh got to pay gosh. closer attention to these press conferences. I've been sleeping. I've been sleeping. So he says he feels like maybe like 2015. So you're thinking, gosh, he must be feeling good. He's in a new environment here in Denver. Uh, you know, this offseason he's had some comments about maybe Carolina wasn't the best fit for him last year. He's feeling good about being in Denver. So I could see how Teddy could win this battle. But f- to me, it feels like this is Drew's job to lose. That I know that the coaches haven't said that, but that's just me sort of reading in between the lines. If you look at the the seasons last year, Drew had 57.3% completion percentage. That didn't make any sense. 57.3 completion percentage. Okay? That's got to go up. His accuracy's got to be better. He's got to be somewhere in that mid-60s range. So he's got to work on that. 16 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Got to start to eliminate some of these big mistakes We saw him do that a little bit at the end of last season. I think that if he comes out, maybe he's got a good week when they do joint practices in Minnesota. Maybe he starts that Vikings preseason game, goes out and plays well. I could see them naming him the starter. But I think that the leash is going to be really short. That that's sort of how I envision things playing out here. Because throughout the offseason program, I thought maybe these guys were neck and neck. They're they're pretty even. And I would say, okay, long-term, maybe uh, Drew's a little bit younger, has a higher ceiling. Uh, Let's just give him the nod here. Let's see if he can continue to get better and better and better. And if it's not working out, if it's not going well, this roster is too good to just go all in behind one guy. If you're not getting that quarterback play, boom, you switch to Teddy. Maybe it's week three. Maybe it's week two even. And you go with Teddy. I could see it playing out like that. So I agree generally that Locke would have a short leash in that situation. But where you kind of lose me, you lost me a long time ago, but you got to, you got to, I let you do your thing. Where you lose me is that the, if this were a normal schedule or set up like most schedules, I think you could afford to do that. The way this schedule sets up this year is that three of the easiest games on your schedule are your first three games. And so if you go to New York and Drew Locke doesn't play well and you lose to the Giants, and then you say, okay, well, we'll stick with Drew one more week, and you go to Jacksonville and you lose an an East Coast game, and you're 0-2 for the third consecutive season, you still don't have a September win under Vic Fangio. Phil, I don't want to be dramatic, but the season, your chances of the playoffs are probably done. You know, very few teams make the playoffs at 0-2. Obviously, it doesn't happen hardly ever when you get to the 0-3, 0-4 that the Broncos have been at. Um, and so that to me is why the start with Drew, go to Teddy if you lose a couple, doesn't make as much sense because you've got to win those. I think if you don't go 2-1 and one in those first three games, you're probably in a little bit of trouble. And I you know, I, I think you probably need to go 3-0 and o to have like a realistic chance of not sneaking in really late in the playoffs because the schedule does get tough. And so then you say, well, hey, like maybe Drew Locke can play and win those games, and if he's not playing well, you go to Teddy. But because this is Teddy's first year in the system, I think you want to give him that experience and that time so that, you know, hey, by the time you get to Baltimore, now Teddy's – you don't want – like you would But that's want- the opposite. That's, that can, I can turn that around against you too and be like, this is Teddy's first time in the offense. Maybe they're going to get off to a slower start if they go with Teddy, and they can't really afford to do that. Yeah, you but know, I, I you can see both sides to a lot of these things. But last year in in Carolina, they did pretty well early. You know, they started three and two. One of those losses, the week one loss, was a four point game. If you look at a lot of those losses last season, early in the year, and I'll kind of separate this for Teddy because if you take him at his word, he thought he was playing really well to begin last season. Suffered a knee injury that he battled through in week nine. You can really see his completion percentage and his play fall off after that, but. Started the year uh, five of his first seven games above 70% completions, 
percentage, had 78, 78, 82. I mean, played really well. And the losses, Phil, seven points, three points, eight points, two points. I think this Broncos team is much more talented than Carolina was last year. The defense is certainly better. I mean, we saw the Panthers' defense struggle against Denver there last year. I think the Broncos' defense is much better. I think the playmakers are better here. I think he does enough and can keep you in these games. And maybe you're not maybe you're not even blowing out some of these teams, but maybe you can win one-score games mm. in a way that keeps you in it. And then, you know, by the time you get to that tough midseason stretch where you got to play Dallas and you got to play the Washington football team, and then later you got to go and play a bunch of divisional it's games. It's much tougher. A, you play a bunch of divisional games in a row. Maybe at that point, Teddy's kind of, he's got his legs, he's playing well. Um, but to me, just the... The fact that you need to start off so fast or else the season is just a disaster, that points to me that they're going to go for the guy that can that they think is not going to give those games away. And, you know, I think we need to give Drew the chance to prove that he's not going to do that. I think he deserves that. He's put the work in. Um, but I just think what we've seen from Teddy is that he can be a facilitator. He describes himself as a point guard. He gets the ball in people's hands. He throws a catchable football. A floater that is catchable. Uh, but especially like if in training camp in the games, you see, hey, Drew's holding the ball and allowing himself to get sacked. Teddy's getting the ball out quick to Jerry Judy or whoever. That to me has to be, you know, you know how good these skill position guys are. You've drafted them highly. You've invested in them. You're going to invest in them with big contracts soon enough get the ball to him. And so if that's what Teddy does well, that's what I would go with. And I wouldn't rule out, Phil, just the – I know that you'd like to be able to make this decision in a vacuum and, and have the the best guy out there. But I can't help but thinking Vic Fangio is going into year three and has started 0-4 and 0-3. Yeah, there's pressure. He's got to win. If you're worried about interceptions and you know Teddy's going to go out there and just – and be the, the, the slow and steady guy that gets you wins, that to me is a check in his column. And then you think, hey, George Payton has a connection to Teddy Bridgewater and brought him here for a reason. That's a connection to Teddy Bridgewater too. And so, Yeah, but Vic and Pat Shermer have a connection to Drew, I mean, if you want to use that same line of thinking. Well, and but in, that's that could go both ways too. You could say they have a good connection and they've seen kind of at the worst what it can be. Um, yep. I, I just think... When I think what is this team's best chance for success, it doesn't have to be, to me at least, like here's something that maybe is a little bit confusing and I hope it it isn't to fans, but like I think Drew Locke would give the Broncos the best chance to win the division. But I think Teddy Bridgewater but I think Teddy Bridgewater has the best chance of getting them to the playoffs. Because Mm. I think Drew Locke could take like if he takes a step forward, he's gonna be really good. He could beat the Chiefs, he could keep you in every game. You could win the division. You could be a really just a surprise team because he has that talent. But it could also just be ugly. Yeah, I think that Drew suffers from some of the uh, bias of seeing some really low points last year. It's hard to, like, forget about those and talk about him without being like those. Th- that Raiders game in particular on the road there was just... Uh, you can't have that. Yeah. So I think that he does suffer from a little bit of bias from those games there, whereas maybe Teddy Teddy doesn't have that same bias where you're saying, okay, Teddy's a veteran in this league. You feel like maybe he's more reliable, more constant. Uh, and so, like, because his team is so good around him, let's just go with a safer pick there. But um, I think if you looked at Drew in a different light and sort of put those outlier games on one side, if you want to call him outliers because he has had some turnover problems, but if you want to put those off to the side for a second, maybe he has taken a step. Maybe he has gotten a little bit better. Maybe he has figured out some of these things and you can give him the benefit of the doubt and say, okay, let's see you do it here. Let's see what this preseason looks like. And Eric, I'm, I'm, I know you say Teddy, I say Drew. Let's talk a little bit about how you think this thing might play out here because the Broncos do have three preseason games. They got the joint practices in Minnesota. How do you sort of see this next month going? Yeah, I mean, I I think that those joint practices, because the Seattle game is first, is that correct? No, Minnesota, Minnesota is first, first, Seattle, and then they finish things up at home against the Rams. I mean, it's got to be decided before the Rams game. Obviously, I, I think you could see more guys play in that than usual because it's two weeks ahead of the, 
Yeah, I was going to ask you, how do you think preseason is going to look now with just three games here? Because traditionally, the first game, most of your starters sit. The second game, they get a little work in. Third game, they play longer, and then they all sit that fourth game. But now with three and then a bye week, how do you how do you see the structure going? Well, it's also a little different because, at least in Denver, we've seen them do joint practices ahead of the second preseason game. Mm-hmm. They're now doing it ahead of the first one. I think you could see a lot of work for Drew and Teddy – during those joint practices and then maybe like a quarter each of work or maybe maybe just even just a few series in that game because you know if you if you've seen two full practices from each of these guys against Minnesota you might not want to risk live bullets quite as much especially with like Jerry Judy or Corland Sutton or Garrett Bowles or whoever these these big names are so I could see a lot of guys sitting there I think you then treat that second game as kind of the maybe the old or still the second game and I think you just kind of go in order you know third game I think you is a dress rehearsal for whoever wins a starting job and you just don't have that fourth game where nobody plays so I, I think that that probably the new schedule probably makes it tougher for the back end of the guy back end of the roster guys to make an impression because you just don't have that you fourth don't have game. the snaps but um, to me I'd like the decision to be made after the second preseason game I think that you, unless it's a a clear, clear runaway. But I mean, that's what happened in 2016 when Mark Sanchez and Trevor Simeon competed. There were two preseason games. Mark Sanchez made the mistakes and it kind of was Trevor Simeon by default. And I I just hope that I hope a guy wins it rather than like Drew having some turnover issues. And it just becomes clear that you have to go with Teddy. I hope that if it's Teddy, I hope he goes out and takes it. If it's Drew, I hope he goes out and takes it because it's easier to have confidence in your quarterback as fans, as a team, if they go out and earn it. Do you think each guy will start one of those first weeks? I I would think that you would split the starts the first two weeks. I think maybe you give Drew the first one, just, you know, he's the incumbent. He was here. I think you give him that courtesy. Teddy maybe starts the second one, but. And then you make a decision. Is that what you're thinking? I would after, after you see them play Seattle, uh, that's probably when I make, make my choice. So that would be one week of practices in Denver against your own team. One week of practices against the Vikings, a game against the Vikings, one week of practices back here, a game against Seattle. That's enough. Well, it's not that it's enough. It's that that's all you got. Yeah. Three weeks here, essentially. At some point, you've got to say, this is our guy and move forward. Because we've heard heard Pat Shermer say that they're similar in some ways, but they're not exactly the same. You've got to design an offense around a guy and you've got to pick. And then... You're going to need that week going into the Rams game, and then you're going to need to spend all that practice time getting ready for New York. Yep. Because you, Phil, I, I mean, I said it before, but you got to go two and one to start at the very least, or else you're just you're staring down the barrel of the gun before you even get started. Yeah. You got to start out fast. I agree with you. I think each guy's going to get a start, and then you just got to make a decision. The tricky thing is, and Vic Fangio said this, he hopes that just one guy really separates himself. I don't see that happening, Eric. I, I I don't see one guy just going out there yeah. and really playing way above the other guy. Definitely considering what we saw in the offseason program. Right. No, I agree with you. I, I just don't think that um, somebody's going to really blow off the doors. I think that they're these are both two pretty good quarterbacks right now. Like, you think that's a fair way to describe them? I mean, at at their best, yeah. I mean, Drew like, was the thirty second ranked quarterback by quarterback rating last year. So yeah. the, his potential is that he can be good, and we've seen from Teddy that he can be pretty good. I think they have good options, but um, like neither of these guys is really great, is what I'm saying. I'm saying right now it. they're yes, probably yes. both described as they're both pretty good. Yeah, like they they can do some really nice things out there for you. You know, but the thing is, can they do it every week? Yeah. Can they not lose a game? And, you know, can they just be reliable? Right. And that that to to me is, you know, what is what is the judging criteria? Is it who can be the best? Is it who can be the most consistent? Is it who's gonna put you in position to win games? I think those those second two are probably what it's gonna be. And in that case, again, that's why I lean toward Teddy Bridgewater. And we talked about this a little bit here, Eric, is that if you want to really contend in this league, you've got to have an upper echelon guy. We, You've got to have For a guy who can go out yep. there and make big plays. Yep. And 
I guess what you're saying is maybe to make the playoffs and maybe for this team right now, that's not necessarily what you should be worrying about. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you would need, even if Drew Locke were to take a step, he would need to take a really big step to be in the same conversation as the Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady and, and that group. Yeah, of course. So, um, I mean, it's hard to win even when you have a good quarterback. Like, you've seen Deshaun Watson – be just outmatched against Patrick Mahomes. We've seen some of these, you know, yeah. Justin Herbert, really good quarterback, but you know, the true upper echelon is just it's tough. And that's why you hope that's why I said at the very beginning, I think it's best for the team long term if Drew can be that really good guy and to and be that consistent. Take a step. Because then you're closer to, you know, the Mahomeses of the world. But um in terms of this year, what gives you the best chance to sneak in the playoffs, I do think it's Teddy. Got it. Okay. So Eric says, Teddy, I say Drew. The beauty of this thing is it's all going to unfold out on the practice field. And before you know it or not, we'll find out an answer. So that that's the beauty of this thing. One more week to go until we get things started here. Uh, uh, well, the two, a little bit longer than that, but you know what I'm saying. It's around Close the corner. Yeah. It's around the corner. We've got one more week of countdown to camp. Can't one wait. More. The next week, Eric, who is our predict our predictions for offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, and will this Broncos team make the playoffs? That's, Perfect. That's coming Perfect. up next week. That's coming up next week. Uh, make sure that you uh, reach out to us on Twitter at Eric Dalala with an A, at Phil Milani with a PH. You can also leave a voicemail, 707 neutral. And then, uh, some sort of an email or something? That's right, neutralzoneshow at gmail.com. Yeah, or just leave a comment right here on this Broncos official YouTube page. We love it. We love it. Yeah. We'll be back next week with one final episode of the Neutral Zone, our Countdown to Camp series here. That's coming up next week. Until then, for Eric Dalal, I am Phil Milani. You've been listening to The, the Neutral, Neutral Zone. Zone.